Bam 2 mini video, and today we're focusing on epistasis. But epistasis is where one allele will actually mask or stop the expression of another, and this leads to multiple genotypes showing the same phenotype. If you look to your left, that table shows you all the different kinds. So if you look, the 9331 is the ratio that we always expect when there is no form of epistasis present. An example of this is genotypes in bird feathers. In birds, this specific species, we have blue feathers, indigo feathers, and albino. So the A allele will code for blue feathers, and it is dominant. So as long as you have a big A, then you will have blue feathers. If you have the B allele, which codes for the indigo feathers, then they will go to indigo as long as you have a dominant B. So if you have a dominant A and a dominant B, it will follow that path all the way to being an indigo feather. So what type of epistasis is this? To figure this out, we have to first make a dihybrid cross between heterozygous A and B of both parents. So using a phylogenetic tree, you can take the A allele and you can use A hyphen for your allele notation are dominant. They will show no matter whether you have an A, big A, big E, A or big A, little A. So you have three quarters chance of having a dominant genotype and then you have a quarter chance of having recessive. Same goes for the B allele. So when you take this and look at the phenotypic probabilities, you notice that you still have that nine to three to three to one ratio when you do just the math. However, when you look at the portions based off the previous path, which you can see here, you find that the a, big A and big B lead to indigo, which was assumed. The big A little B will only lead to blue because you no longer have a dominant B to take it all the way to indigo. The recessive A on both double homozygous recessive will only lead to white because you no longer have a dominant A to even take you to the blue. So your ratio becomes nine to three to four. Your next step is to compare the phenotype ratios to that of a normal dihybrid cross, which is nine, three, three, one. And so when you do this, you look at that table to find what form you have. So we know that we have nine indigo, three blue and four white. So if we go back to the reference table, we see that nine to three to four is a single recessive type of epistasis. However, when you don't have a dihybrid cross present, you're gonna end up with a different set of ratios than when you have the heterozygous. So in this case, you have a half chance of getting the dominant allele and a half chance of being all recessive, and then the same for the B allele. And so when you take this into the phenotypic probabilities, you have four sixteenths chance of getting any of the four genotypes. This being said, you then have four indigo, four blue, but you have eight white. So your ratio then becomes four indigo, four blue, and eight white, making it very different than what we saw with the dihybrid cross. These are my references, and thank you for watching.